Cardano's slow, steady approach to blockchain development has no doubt given up much ground in terms of the first mover advantage. However, this decision was a calculated one and has in fact placed it at the front of the pack in terms of blockchain architecture and technological advancements. The vision and foresight here is outstanding. Long term, blockchain ecosystems will live and die by their design choices and social preferences. As intended, the decision to use functional programming languages and formal methods will play a much greater role in the wider adoption of this technology than the industry currently gives it credit for. Move fast is a solution to short term network effect, but not for mass adoption. For blockchain to win in its quest to become a globally adopted financial and social operating system, it's Cardano's long game approach that's proven to make the most sense. Surely we have to demand more than robbery forest. The details presented in this video deliver a compelling case to why it's Cardano that will prevail in the pursuit of smart contract supremacy. Welcome back for today's installment of Cardano Insights, where we track developments of the pulse of Cardano and its ecosystem. In today's episode, we explore aspects of the Cardano blockchain design that enables the most robust smart contracts industry-wide, reflect on what this means for adoption, and take a look at a very interesting catalyst proposal that's laying down the framework for achieving the next evolution of smart contract security. How does this compare to the EVM model, and is this the answer to robbery forest? Let's find out and get straight into it. Hopefully, after watching this video, it will provide some perspective and demonstrate that the years, resources and expertise IOG spent in achieving such a groundbreaking secure system is not for the academics, but actually for the benefit of its users. With 6 years uptime, 90 plus million transactions and zero hacks, Cardano is proving to be the answer to robbery forest and based on a collection of very specific design choices, the blockchain with the most realistic chance of achieving a smart contract ecosystem capable of serving the masses. Now you may have heard criticisms about Cardano's scientific research, use of Haskell, formal methods and its academic peer-reviewed approach. Sounds crazy right, that one would be attacked for taking a scientific and considered approach to building a system intended to scale to the billions. Critics will tell you that this is all not necessary, it's far too expensive, time consuming and is just academia flexing its brain cells. But it's a fact, mission critical systems require the highest code assurances, it makes sense for your airplanes or military infrastructure then why not your financial system? Despite the industry pushback, Cardano never deviated from this path and as a result has produced a collection of exceptional industry-defining advancements. For example, a ledger that is formally verified delivering the highest level of code assurances, best-in-class non-custodial true liquid staking, transaction determinism with low predictable cost and no fee for failed transactions, hard fault combinator for a seamless blockchain upgradability, the extended UTXO model based on Bitcoin's UTXO model but programmable, and Plutus, the foundation to realize an ecosystem with formally verified smart contracts, which is the main focus for today. These are no small feats and are undeniable requirements if your intentions are to attract mass users and value to the system. So let's start with why Haskell. Cardano chose Haskell not to be flashy, but because it's a functional programming language that emphasizes what is known as pure functions, that is, functions that produce the same output result for the same input. These functions do not maintain any state between executions or produce any side effects, which means they do not change or affect external data or variables in the wider system. Only when you have pure functions can you have formal verification, which is a rigorous process of mathematically checking the correctness of a function's behavior. This is extremely useful for building and testing secure smart contracts, but we'll come to this later. To enable pure functions, this system must be designed based on the lambda calculus, which is a formal mathematical system for expressing the notion of computation and forms the basis for functional programming languages like Haskell. Although to date blockchain hacks have never occurred in the ledger but only in the smart contracts, this design choice may seem overkill but in fact represents unparalleled forward thinking and future proofing. As Cardano aims to become a global social and financial system, this requires the utmost reliability and high assurance verification. It's a feature not a flaw. The decision to use Haskell means that Cardano ledger rules can be formally verified and importantly have to be each time the ledger rules are to change. This comes in particularly advantageous when SIPs, Cardano improvement proposals, are submitted. Formal verification prevents errors when these changes are made, avoiding disruptions or catastrophic bugs in the code. In this respect, Cardano is unique, having the ability to deliver continuous high assurance code throughout the layer 1 evolution. This is as much a social preference as it is a strategic design choice to produce the most flawless system that is provably secure. 
The use of a functional programming language and formal verification in Cardano's blockchain development are extremely important factors often overlooked and undervalued by the wider industry. I expect this narrative, however, to be at the forefront when blockchain does indeed achieve more meaningful adoption, as security, correctness and reliability are going to be imperative in this respect. Forget markets and bull cycles, I would hazard a guess that real adoption is going to gravitate to the system with these properties. So that's the ledger code. What about Cardano's smart contract programmability? Well, all programming languages building smart contracts on Cardano compile to the Plutus Core virtual machine. Plutus Core is based on the Lambda calculus, which, as discussed earlier, forms the basis of Haskell, a functioning programming language that, again, enables pure functions, property-based testing, and formal verification. On Cardano, programming new smart contract functions refer to the local state, meaning the state is confined to individual transactions or contracts, rather than a global state, like the EVM or SVM models on Ethereum and Solana. This greatly reduces the number of elements of state that needs to be managed and tested. Each test case can focus on the local state relevant to the specific function or contract being created, making it easier to manage and revert state during testing. As Cardano has local state and pure functions, this significantly simplifies the challenges associated with property-based testing. Pure functions allow for more straightforward and predictable testing. Since the functions are deterministic, tests are reproducible and do not depend on external state or the order of execution. Any failing test case can easily be reproduced by reusing the same inputs. This aids in debugging and ensures that issues can be consistently investigated and resolved. So the deterministic nature of pure functions and the confined scope of local state reduce complexity, making it easier to generate test cases, manage state, and ensure reproducibility. This leads to more efficient and effective testing, enhancing the reliability and security of smart contracts on Cardano. Such an approach highlights the strengths of functional programming principles in creating robust, testable, and secure blockchain systems. So it seems, whilst taking the route of using a functional programming language might be more costly, difficult and time consuming in the design phase, when it comes to the application, it has major benefits to developers and importantly, the end users interacting with smart contracts from an efficiency and security perspective. Developers can focus on the logic of individual contracts and their functions knowing that the testing framework can effectively handle the local state and pure functions. The inherent properties of pure functions and local state makes it easy to ensure that the smart contracts behave correctly and securely. Property-based testing can more effectively uncover edge cases and potential vulnerabilities. The reduced complexity allows for more efficient use of testing resources, enabling broader test coverage and quicker iterations. In comparison, blockchains such as Ethereum and Solana took a completely different path. They avoided functional programming languages for both Layer 1 and EVM SVM smart contract development. As a result, they cannot have pure functions and therefore cannot be formally verified for high assurances. This is something that Ethereum and Solana developers don't want you to hear as it completely goes against their incentives and what is actually achievable within the accounts model and EVM SVM global state design. They would prefer to remain in robbery forest even if it affects them occasionally. This is not a sustainable way of thinking or designing of a system. Like I said before, it's fine for crypto bubble network growth, but nowhere near the standard required for mass participation. Let's break it down a little deeper. On Ethereum's account-based model, it keeps track of all balances as a global state. When programming new functions or smart contracts, it references the global state, which is forever changing. This makes it more difficult to test the smart contracts, causing a far higher probability for potential bugs that can lead to exploits. Smart contracts on Ethereum and Solana often depend on the current state of the blockchain, which includes things like account balances, contract states, and transaction history. Any unexpected change in this state can cause contracts to behave in unintended ways. The global state encompasses all the data and transactions on the network. This complexity can make it challenging to fully understand and predict the interactions between different smart contracts. Bugs often arise when contracts interact in unforeseen ways, particularly when one contract's state changes affects another's. When multiple transactions are processed concurrently, race conditions can occur. These arise when the outcome depends on the sequence or timing of uncontrolled events, leading to inconsistent states. Developers might not anticipate how different transactions interact with the global state, again, leading to potential exploits. Once deployed, smart contracts cannot be easily changed. If a bug is discovered, fixing it is difficult without deploying a new contract and migrating the state. This immutability means that any bug related to state handling can have lasting impacts and be exploited repeatedly until a workaround is implemented. Hello again, Robbery Forest. 
Without formal methods to prove the correctness of a contract's state transitions, bugs on EVM and SVM chains continue to slip through and are being exploited, leading to the loss of millions of dollars worth of user funds, now a commonplace occurrence. You only have to do a simple internet search to find an endless list of exploits, and they just keep coming. Now, it's important to be clear, although one of Cardano's, and specifically Pluto's, core strengths is that it's well suited for formal verification. As of now, there is no open source framework for the formal verification of Cardano smart contracts to facilitate the growing ecosystem of developers and dApps. The vast majority of Cardano dApps do not currently leverage formal methods at all. But the point is, operating with a global state and the use of non-functional programming languages means that you can never have formally verified smart contracts. The smart contract system of Cardano was designed with formal verification in mind. Its architecture and programming language paradigm were deliberately chosen for their compatibility with formal verification. In the original white paper for Plutus, the ability to easily apply formal methods to reason about the behavior of smart contracts was one of the most critical features of the smart contract system and one of the main advantages it has over other smart contract platforms. So what's the solution? How do we go about making formal verification of smart contracts in our ecosystem commonplace? Enter Anastasia Labs, a rockstar Cardano development team who have established themselves as a leading auditing firm within the ecosystem, responsible for a long list of dApp development, collaborations and open source tooling infrastructure. Here in Catalyst Fund 12, tapping into the world's largest decentralized innovation fund, they have submitted a powerful proposal to deliver the open source framework for Cardano's smart contract formal verification. This framework intends to provide smart contract developers on Cardano with the tools needed to easily define a formal specification of their smart contracts and then prove that those contracts are correct with respect to that specification. This proposal is the pathway to unleash what is one of Plutus's key capabilities. Making formal approaches to smart contract development more accessible broadens the scope for a wider spectrum of dApp developers to create ultra-safe dApps in our ecosystem. This is a big deal. I really hope this gets funded. You can't deny that arming ecosystem developers with the tools they need to check their code is free of bugs and potential exploits with an even greater degree of certainty will go a long way in fortifying the protocols built on Cardano. I also think this speaks volumes about where the developers' heads are at in the Cardano ecosystem. It's rather telling, while the EVM and SVM robbery forest has continuous exploits, Cardano remains unhacked, yet it's Cardano developers striving for the highest levels of security assurances and smart contract standards. Thinking long-term secure DeFi and smart contract platform ecosystem rather than short-term self-interest that's plaguing the industry. Another sign that the future for Cardano adoption looks undeniably bright. If you want to check out this proposal in more detail, I've linked it in the description below. The development of a formal verification framework unlocks one of Cardano's many unique strengths or superpowers, enhancing the security and reliability of its smart contracts exponentially. This not only safeguards the assets and interests of users, but also solidifies Cardano's position as the most secure and trustworthy platforms for decentralized applications and DeFi projects. The long-term benefits of reduced security risks and increased confidence in the ecosystem presents a compelling case for what the future of adoption of blockchain ecosystems is likely to rest upon. When we look at the industry as a whole, with over 90 billion TVL currently posted by DeFi Llama, you could argue the industry has already grown too large to not already have formally verified smart contracts. If we are to be serious about this term mass adoption that gets thrown around far too often with little substance, isn't it pretty clear that without formal verification in the smart contracts, this is purely just a big dream? Ultimately, it boils down to design choices. Cardano was built to enable formally verified smart contracts, something the EVM and SVM world is unlikely to ever achieve. Once again, it's Cardano's architecture that's proving to have the qualities that you would expect a system of this importance and magnitude to possess. Place your emotions to one side and look at the bare facts because it's the truth that will set you free. So that's it for today's installment of Cardano Insights. I hope you enjoyed diving down this rabbit hole with me. If you found value in the content and want to help Sapien reach a wider audience, then please drop a comment below, like, share and subscribe, which is the best way you can help support the channel. Above all, remember to spread those positive Cardano vibes far and wide. I'll be back soon with more Cardano content, but until then, thanks for watching, have a great week ahead, and as always, keep it Cardano.